Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Scratch Programming Channel. Today we'll be working on the Poké Dodge game, a very original game that I've created for you. Now the objectives of this game is to control Pikachu with your mouse and he'll dodge 3 balls, 3 Poké balls. A verbal timer will record the time, Pikachu will collect as many candies that appear from time to time. Now you can battle with friends to see who can dodge the longest and collect the most points. Okay, I also would like to explain to you the boolean concept we're gonna use in this game right now. In boolean concepts, true is equal to 1 and false is equal to 0. So at the start of the game, we're gonna set stop to 0. Alright, this is when the timer will continue until stop equals to 1. Now, when the Pokeballs touch Pikachu, stop will change to 1. And this is true, and it will stop the game. Alright, so let's take a look at the game. Alright, this one a completed version here I've done sometime earlier. Let's take a look. Okay, it's over here. Alright, so this is the stop over here. Okay, repeat the stop equals to one and so let's play. Let's take a look at the game. Alright, so the green flag start. Oops. 100 points, not too bad for two hits. Right, so let's start. Let's stop this again and start. Oh, it's just 50 points. Alright, let's try it one more time. Oh man, I'm a bad player. One, two, three. Oh, stay focused. Four. Oh, okay. 250 points, that means I have taken 5 candies and my best time is 25. Alright, so there will be a timer and a score. So let's get down to business and program this one out. Okay, I'm just gonna minimize this. Now you can click on the link below to get all these uh, sprites and the starting Poké Dodge basic setup which looks like this, there's two out, the ultra ball and the great ball is done and there's a candy and the stage is practically empty so I am gonna first copy the link which I'm gonna use this is how I do my work very fast is to copy the address and I'm just gonna paste over here okay I'm gonna upload the pokeball which is a bit big compared to the rest it's okay that's how we like it so that it has a very high resolution Boy, girl, and Pikachu. Okay, so it's a bit of a mess here. So let's start with the boy costume. Let's get rid of the background in case you do not know how to do this. Okay, if we have a color, the slash over here, place the color. It's done, right? Okay, so the boy, I'm gonna set him to. Now when the game starts, right, I'm going to set his size to 30%, so there he is. I'm going to put where he's supposed to go, which is over here, so I'm going to just pull this code, right? So once you put a code over there, the coordinates will automatically appear, but I don't like this number that much because it's not even. So let's round it off, right? So I'm just gonna round that one out and down nicely. So the Y is a bit too high, so maybe wait 125 negative. That's nice. I'm gonna pass this. Oh, if I pass it over to the girl, I'm gonna show him, right? Okay. And now, what happens to this boy is actually he hides. He's hiding away. Now, he only appears much later on, I'm just going to click there, I'm just going to leave this gap first, it's going to show at the end of the game, right? Okay, I'm just going to pass this code over to the girl too, so she's going to hide, take it from the boy, I'm going to show later on, she's going to show at 180, so, sorry, this is the code for the boy, it's going to go to the girl, Okay, she's gonna show at 180. Right. Okay. Now the ball is a bit too big. 
Let's see where to start. That's for the Pokeball. Green flag. Okay, set size to. Now we're gonna set size to 30%. Okay, I like to do it this way because I get to keep the resolution. So if I go back to 100, it's still perfect. Intact, yeah. So that's how you should. You gotta do it. All right, set size. Now every ball, every sprite. It's a good thing to do. Show. Right location. Now you can send him anywhere actually. Right, so um, he's just gonna go to location. Right, I'm gonna start him out at somewhere the top up there. Just gonna put this back. Okay, so we have one this one is 0 to 20. Okay, right up there. Alright, and he's just gonna point in between 90 and minus 90. Okay, okay. and he's gonna he's gonna move. Move and give an edge bounce. Right? If he touches Pikachu, what will happen is that if he touches Pikachu, okay, we're gonna activate the stop. Right, we have not created variables, so I'm gonna go ahead and create three variables. We're gonna use score, timer, and something we like to call stop. Okay, so I'm not gonna use a broadcast for this one. I'm gonna change now. I'm gonna change the stop to one. Alright, so if he touches Pikachu, right now this value is gonna go up to one. Okay. Right, and it's gonna signal to everybody that stop is activated. Okay, so in that sense, I am going to repeat this check. Okay, I'm gonna let this movement happen to stop because to one. Now in this case, stop is because one, so it's not moving in at all. So who controls this top speaker to himself? So let's go get down to the Pikachu. So at the start. Okay. Now Pikachu is gonna show up again. Okay, he's gonna set three variables up. Okay, let's call the timer and stop. At the start, the stop is zero, so you can see zero, right? Okay, and it's just gonna show, set his size to the twenty percent. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that's small enough to dodge the balls. Okay, now what he's gonna do? He's gonna glide around. To various locations, it's gonna glide to mouse X and mouse Y, just like in our other tutorial. Okay, but in the other tutorial, we're using forever, but instead, this time around, I'm just gonna use the same one as the Pokeball okay, earlier on the repeat stop. So, Pikachu gets that one, right? No, oh, it was not translated, but never mind. Just gonna do that manually, right? Forever. Now the advantage of the Boolean stop is that there's an additional you get to put further down over here, right? Whereas the forever has just a complete loop. Okay, so I'm just not gonna use my favorite forever loop. Just gonna use a 
we did until. So let's try this one. So because you're just moving around. Okay. There you go. Stop one, everything stops. Yeah. Okay. So Okay, I am going to start the timer, so I'm just going to do a broadcast for the timer to start. Alright, so start timer. Okay, when I receive start timer, I am going to, right, I am going to change my timer by 0 0.1 right and do I want to do this forever? no I am also going to do this as long as the stop is 0 I'm just going to do this but let's stop to 1 I'm going to escape the loop right and if this happens it signals the end of the game so I'm going to broadcast and wait we broadcast for game end Okay, now when game ends, the boy and the girl will appear. When I receive game end, they will show up. This boy is just gonna show up at the same time. Right, so you can see the link. Right, stop one, stop one. Stop one is gonna be activated by the ball, so I'm just gonna. Okay, I can actually pass these codes down to the blue ball and the red ball sorry the blue and the black ball the green ball and the ultra ball right okay let's see now okay they are working fine okay looking good looking good now um let's change the speed so pokeball is moving it say a bit slower at eight okay ultra ball which is the rarest 12 Okay, Gary Ball is at 10, so they're gonna start at the top and they're just gonna let Pikachu run around. Yep, gets to dodge. Hmm, this is a good dodging game. Okay, now, as for the candy, right? Well, for the candy, you can also use a bit of the codes from the ball. One of the great balls, so I'm just gonna copy over. So, what's gonna happen is that. Candy doesn't need to set size because it's a bit small already. So let's try it 100. Let's check it out. Okay, now the candy will go to random positions, right? Go to random here, plus 2, let's start minus 240. Okay, you can check our tutorials, uh, the tutorials and the sizes, right? And However, if he touches Pikachu, right, he is going to change the score by 50. Okay. And this time around, I'm just going to use forever for this one. Right. Okay. However, if I receive game in, I'm going to hide. So Pikachu doesn't get to increase the score anymore. Right, so timer is all set now. When this boy receives, he's gonna say, Okay, he's just gonna say, He's gonna use say, look, say, forever. I'm just gonna use a join, it's a join, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay, data timer. He's gonna say your best time is timer. There you go. And the girl is gonna say your score is score. So there you have it. They have the Pokemon game. Ooh. Big candy over there, so it's the same.
Oh, there you have it. So, let's play the game one more time. Not bad. 150. Oh, I just got 150, but my time is at 1807. That's not too bad. Alright, so I'm just going to review a bit on the candy. Now, on the candy, we need to set a random location at the start. Right? So, this time I'm going to use forever. But when the game ends, I'm going to hide the candy away. So, it's okay to see forever here. Alright, so if the ship catch you, I'm going to hide my Pikachu and then change the score. Sorry, hide the candy. Change the score. Play it, pop sound. And I am going to go to a new location and show myself up. Right, that's what can be. Okay, now just gonna show a bit on the stage, right? The stage which can do for yourself to do a very nice background. You can set these two colors to orange and yellow for the center. Um, choose this one over here, which shows a radial feel. Just gonna do a radial feel. Okay, just clear that. I'm just gonna do. A perfect sensor, radio feel. Okay, here we go. Done. Right, script. Okay, the trick here, I'm just gonna use look. Okay, this is backdrop one. So I'm gonna switch to backdrop one, which is the radio feel. I'm gonna change the pixel effect to pixel effect 250. There you go. Right. So each time you use a pixelate effect, I would recommend to use a clear graphic effects. Right at the start to clear up everything, and then go on to use the pixelate effect. Right. Okay, not too bad. Three hundred points. Okay, so just let's do a quick review. The Pikachu, from the Pikachu sprite, the Pikachu sets the timers on stop boolean, broadcast game starts and repeat. Until stop goes to one, right? So the timer receives the game start, and the timer starts. Also, it's controlled by the boolean stop goes to one, right? And this is the control for the gliding. Candy appears at random locations, so you gotta program one at the start and one each time it touches the Pikachu. The great ball and three pokeballs are approximately the same. They do the movement and bounce and change the stop by one each time. This is Pikachu and this will signal the game stop. But the time to stop two, but same. Only different movement, the boy and the girl rocket team. Right? When you see the game end, okay, the game end is sent out by Pikachu over here. Right? So the timer ends, okay, rock has game end, wait, the boy receives the game end, and the girl receives the game end, and don't forget that we learned about the joint, the joint statement variable today. Okay, do, I hope you liked the video, and don't forget to subscribe, and see you at our next Scratch tutorial. Alright, happy programming, see ya!